Hello to everybody listening. This is Daniel Morrison, software engineer at Matrix TSL. Today we're going to be looking at the new pseudocode view in Flowcode version 8. In front of you is a relatively simple project containing uh, three components. One of them is an LCD display, one is a slider and one is a switch. The idea behind this project is, is very simple. When the switch is turned on, then whatever the value of the slider is will be reflected on the display here. So you'll see as I move it up and down, the value on the display changes. On the left, you'll see the C code, which is uh, generated by flow code as a result of the icons on your flow chart. So here you'll see the flow chart and you'll notice that it's a, it's a fairly small flow chart. It contains um, not too many icons, but it contains icons of different types. So for example, we have the while loop, we have component macro calls, we have decision icons, and we have calculation and delay icons as well. The C code generated by Flowcode is, is something which allows users to learn programming um, a, in a more imperative style. So we can look at the, the flowchart icons and we can look at the C code generated from them. The problem though is that if you're learning programming from, from, a complete, from the standpoint of a complete beginner, C code can be quite difficult in the sense that certain uh, syntactical quirks of C are perhaps not particularly intuitive. So, you know, for example, we look here, we have a double equal sign. We, we need to make sure that semicolons are in the right place, that we have opening and closing braces in all the correct places, that we pass the correct parameters to the correct function names. And if you're trying to learn programming, you're you, you typically start off trying to learn the logic of programming. So this is one of the principles behind flow code is that it allows you to concentrate more on the logic of your program rather than the syntax of your program. But there will reach a point where students and, and enthusiasts who wish to learn programming, they need to be able to deal with sort of text-based programming. So an imperative programming language where we have statements, we have function calls and, and these sorts of constructs but we we don't like the initial barrier that C presents. So in the past, this is why we uh, educational establishments and, and researchers invented the idea of pseudocode. And pseudocode, the idea behind pseudocode is allow people to get all these advantages of imper imperative text-based programming, but without some of the associated complexities of any particular programming language. So you'll see on the right here, the new pseudocode view. And your initial impression should be, well, that, that's a lot more concise and compact than the C view on the left. It contains all the same commands in the sense that every single icon in the flowchart is reflected by an entry in the pseudocode view, in the same way that every single icon in the flowchart is reflected by a, an entry in the C code view. But you'll notice that it's a lot cleaner looking. We have a lot smaller uh, statements. We, we use fewer uh, braces, we don't have semicolons. And if you're trying to come at the, if you're trying to develop a program from the perspective of a beginner to programming, you, you now suddenly you're presented with a much easier concept to digest. So let's take, for example, we have uh, this macro call on the left. Now this, this of course calls uh, one, of, one of our functions within flow code, which prints the string to the LCD trying to explain this to a student why we're passing you know these parameters the way we are um, why why the function names are, are so long and, and complicated that that can that can occasionally get in the way of, of learning the idea behind a function call and its place within a program so on the right you'll see that we we simply have the statement call component macro the name of the macro uh, as as it's seen within the flow chart the name of the component associated with that macro and the parameter that we, we pass to the function as well. So, so now suddenly it's a lot easier. The idea that, well, we have this sequence of statements and at some point during the sequence of statements, we jump into this other section of code. And, and of course, at, at some point we return back and then continue the control flow. You'll see as well that things like uh, loops are a lot simpler. So suddenly now we don't we don't require these these curly braces. 
it's it's a lot easier to understand exactly what's happening so the the do while is uh, and the end is perhaps more intuitive than than while and then a closing brace we we don't need things like the double equals sign we can just we can talk in a much more natural way we can say if this variable is equal to this value we can we can modify values using set and we can we can for example call delays just by using the word delay as well this pseudocode view is fully functional in the way that the flowchart and the C code is. So uh, what this means is we can drag icons onto the pseudocode view. We can move icons around, we can delete icons, and we can do all the all the important programming which we use the flowchart and the C code view to do. We can we can still do that in the pseudocode view. So hopefully this is this makes the idea of learning programming uh, a lot easier, and it also offers you, the user, a, a third way of viewing your program as well. So you're you're not um, forced to choose between flowcharts or perhaps um, what may be complex C code as well. You you have this very comfortable middle ground where you have code in a more traditional sense, but it's a lot simpler. It's a lot easier to follow. It's a lot easier to explain programs to people. So if you if you wish to pass uh, a program to somebody else, or you wish to describe it to somebody, the pseudocode offers that level of flexibility and simplicity that the C code view perhaps uh, can't ever offer. And in a way that uh, the perhaps large um, space consuming nature of a flowchart can't offer as well. Hopefully that describes a new pseudocode view in some depth. Um, if you like this video, I recommend you check out some of the other videos in this series showing off some of the new features of Flowcode 8 as well as some of the existing features of Flowcode um, to new users who may not be familiar with the software. Thanks for listening.